Welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to do is do the part two of setting up the valve train on Project Mixed Up Boss. Now I'm going to be covering things like degreeing the cam in, checking my piston to valve clearance, and checking the valve train geometry with this Jessel setup on these hammerhead performance engine heads. A lot of good stuff coming up. But I'm not going to go into a lot of great detail. Why? There's a lot of good videos out there explaining how to do these things. Uh, the Horsepower Monster has an excellent video on degree and cams in. I suggest you go over there. And my buddy Tim Halstead, the Drag Boss, just did an amazing two-part series of checking piston to valve clearance. So head over to those two channels if you want to learn more about cam degree in and measuring for your piston to valve clearance because I promise you you'll like it. So let's get started on this thing and see what we come up with. To make any kind of horsepower, you need to make sure that your cam is degreed in properly. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. As you can see, I'm finding true top dead center. And how I'm doing this is I'm taking the degree wheel with my pointer and I'm averaging out the two checkpoints to make sure that they equal out at zero and that will be true top dead center. Once you have found true top dead center, then you can actually start the cam degree and process. Set up your dial indicator on the intake load. Go to max lift. Once you have done this, go 50 thousandths past max lift. Bring it back. Document that number. And then, once you have that number, go the other direction to back to max lift. And then another 50 thousandths and then you will document that number as well. Then after that, it's just as simple as adding the two numbers together, dividing by two, and then you have your intake center line. We're at 104.5, which is going to be perfect. Once you get the cam degreed in, you can move on to other things. As you can see, I've got my rocker arm set up, mocked up, so that I can determine my push rod length. I'm going to do this for both the intake and the exhaust. You mock it up like you would have it running, take your adjustable push rod, and the push rod is marked. It has a hash mark on it. And for every rotation of the end equals 50 thousandths of an inch. So on this setup right here, I'm going to end up with a 8.950 intake push rod length. Now that we've got the intake push rod length determined, we move over to the exhaust side and we just simply repeat the process. We get the lash taken up like you would in a running engine and then it's the matter of removing the rocker arm and doing the same thing, measuring the amount of turns that it took on the push rod checker to come up with the push rod length. And for the exhaust, I wound up with a 9.950 pushrod length. Now that I have my pushrod length set, I can go back and actually do things like check my valve to piston clearance. And as you can see, I have 110 thousandths on the intake, which is dead on perfect. For this next step, you see that I'm using Dicom Layout Blue. You can use a permanent magic marker or anything like that. But I'm going to mock up the rocker assembly so that I can actually rotate the engine over twice and you'll notice that I put my hand on it pulling up on the valve tip. This is to make sure that the roller is making really good contact with the tip of the valve so it'll leave a good contact pattern in that. Once you do that, I actually roll it over twice and after that's done you just remove the rocker arm assembly and then you can see the contact pattern that's being made by the rocker arm on the valve tip itself. And then, like I said, I hated to use a lash cap, but it's perfect. So as you can see, everything has been taken care of. I got my push rod lint checked, got those push rods ordered, so hopefully they'll be here in the next day or two. Uh, the geometry on this thing is going to be spot on. I wound up having to run a lash cap to get everything kind of in check. Now, something important to note, something I'm very impressed with on these heads. The geometry is set up through the stand height. 
most shaft rockers that I personally have dealt with in the past, whether it be Jessel or TND or anything else, I've always had to shim the stands in order to get the valve train geometry right. With this here, not a problem. It bolted right on. Only thing I needed to do for the lift cam that I'm using is to use a lash cap. It's going to turn out perfect. So I appreciate you checking out the video. Now what I get to do is take it all back apart. The mock-up is done. Now it's just ready for final assembly. Yes, it's finally here. I can't believe it. So I've got to get the block painted. In the next video, you'll see it come from a short block to having the heads on it the whole nine yards. If you notice over here, we've got the next project for Unity Motorsports Garage in the wings. This is my buddy Chris Reese's uh, engine. It's going to be a 357 inch Windsor. This video series on that engine is going to be more for the everyday man's 351. This was an older build. It was built probably about 17 years ago, I'm guessing, 18 years ago. And we're going to go back into it and freshen it up and make it into the engine that it deserves to be, which is a killer street piece because it's going into his 68 Mustang. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.